Hi everyone, James here from F9 Audio and the Freemasons and welcome to F9 Parallel Mixing Suite for Ableton 9.5 and above. Before we go any further, let me show you exactly what this can do. So this is an actual production that's coming to me for mix. It's from my very good friend, Will Dawson, and features a singer from London called Shanice. It's a brilliant piece of soulful house. It's split into two. The top section is without the racks, and the bottom section is with the racks applied. Have a listen to the difference. Yesterday had you on my mind. Think about a happy time. But that picture's a foot. Now, that shows you the kind of difference these racks can make. It's still exactly the same audio, but bigger, fatter, wider, and clearer. So how are we getting these results? When we apply any kind of audio process to our signals, we normally just dump the plug-in on the channel, on the stem, or on the instrument, and the entire signal is affected by that process. Parallel processing is different. We take the signal and first make an exact copy. Then we apply the audio process to that copy, add the results together, and out of the other end of the process comes this combined audio signal. Now, as the original is always left untouched, we get this amazing clarity with parallel processing while still being able to add weight and power. Now, one popular way of implementing parallel processing inside a plugin is to use a wet and dry control. Now, I've always had a bit of a problem with this because as you change the wet and dry control, often your levels change, which means you've got to rebalance things, giving you more work. What we wanted to do here was give you a tool set where you just put them on, turn up controls, and your sound gets better. And let me show you exactly what I mean by that. So we may as well start with some beats, and here's an example using a selection of drum stems from the 21st century Soul Pack. Here are the stems unprocessed. Now, throughout this release, we've tried to use uh, descriptive terms on the macros rather than technical, as it forces you to use your ears a bit more, which can be a much more natural way of working. Let me just show you what a few of them can do. Uh, the squish. And these two, midfield and presence. Now you will find a lot of the racks have this headroom control. Now everyone works slightly differently. Some people work quietly in Ableton and some people work with all of everything pretty much in the red. This headroom controls a, a couple of utility plugins um, either side of the rack chain and allows you to just dial in more headroom if you're using really hot sources into the rack. The base end of any modern production is absolutely vital and we've got some great tools for you in this release. Let me just play you back this example that was used in the demos. <laughs> And now let's solo in on the kick. I've applied the kick sonic rack and we've got these two first controls, kick tune and focus. Now this is using, actually it's a serial process this, but it's brilliant. It's using uh, one of Live 9.5's uh, cytomic filters with a little bit of drive to fine tune a high pass filter that will bring focus and power to your kicks. So select the point for any modern kick like this somewhere around 40 hertz and just dial up the focus. And now the parallels come into play. We're gonna use a little bit of harmonic distortion here. 
I'm going to tune that a bit higher. We don't need too much of it. And add some punch. Now, once again, that headroom control there is there just in case you're using really hot sources, but it seems fine for this. Let's listen in the track. <laughs> So let's hear this with and without. First of all, without. And now with. Okay, now let's do the same with the bass. Now I've got the Bass Sonics rack here. It's very similar to the kick, but hand tuned to make it work for bass instruments. Uh, we're gonna come up higher on the actual note, lots of focus. Now let's add some harmonics and quite a bit of drive for this, actually. That's generating lots of nice third harmonics that will just help the bass line note to cut through. So now let's put that in the track. And this is what it was before. And now in. Much warmer. So that's the bass end dealt with. Now let's start to get some of the percussion working. Now that's the crusty old loop that I've got floating around in the background of this. And I don't know about you, but I've always found it difficult to process these kind of things. Normally when you dump plugins on this, it kind of brings the wrong frequencies up or it just doesn't sound particularly natural. Uh, so I want to introduce you now to one of my favorite things in this pack. It's the two band passive EQ. It's only called a passive because it reminds me of hardware passive EQs. It's actually using a bandpass filter circuit um, running completely in parallel. So you can select the frequency of the lower band here. Where do we go from 40 hertz up to 2.0? four kilohertz. This one will go from one kilohertz to 14 kilohertz. Um, it's got some overlap in there and it just means it, you can be a bit more precise with what you're doing. Let me show you what this can do. So frequency at about 500 and I'm going to turn the gain up and play. Now that's how I've always wanted these kind of things to sound, but I've been hard pushed to find any EQ that will do that. Now let's just bring a little bit of top or high mid into it. And let me show you now before and after. So before. After. And now let me show you what that's doing in the context of the track. Now, obviously there is a level differential there, but you can hear what it's doing. And as I say, for me, this was a eureka moment whilst we were putting this together, because that's exactly how I've always wanted these kind of things that you use in productions to actually sound. Now, I've got the entire production running through this uh, track. Everything's been routed to it. And on the track, I've got a few of my utter favorites within this pack. And the next one I want to show you is this, the Parallel Equalizer. This is a fixed band equalizer, and there's a couple of versions of it with different frequency ranges. We've also supplied all of the individual frequency bands as uh, single racks that you can just turn up. Now, what makes this different from any other rack that I've seen out there? is that all of the bands uh, within this are running in parallel. Now that gives a completely different sound to a normal EQ. Um, and it's the reason why we've used fixed frequency bands, because you can have them really wide and it still make a massive and very positive effect. But as I say, turning it off, nothing is, sorry, when it's turned off, nothing is happening. So anything that you're going to do here is going to be additive, which psychologically, whilst you're mixing, is incredibly important, I've always thought. Let me show you. <laughs> So 
So how easy was that? We just turned a few controls and everything started to sound a little bit better. Now you may notice these uh, choke controls turning up on the EQs. What these do is uh, change the threshold of a compressor that's actually in every single one of the EQ bands and just keep things under control a little bit. Now for the fun stuff. I've got two extra racks here, radio sound and breakdown, and look at what happens when I turn up their single dial controls. Now, these racks are also designed to work pretty much at any stage throughout your production. Let me just play you the backing vocal section of the Soulful example. I'd give anything to see your face cause I'm missing you. It sounds great already, but now let me show you what happens when we use the Vocal Sonics rack and just turn up some of the controls. I'd give anything to see your face cause I'm missing you. I'd give anything to see your face cause I'm missing you. And once again, we're using descriptive terms on all of the macros here. And already you can see that's starting to bring that right out. We could even just add a little bit of extra warmth with the parallel equalizer. I'd give anything to see your face cause I'm missing you. If we wanted to bring this even further forward, um, we can use the tape compression. Now, this is one of the sub racks. Um, F9 is as much about education as uh, it is about the products. Um, so what we've done is supplied you with all of the building blocks, pretty much with one knob controls that you can open up, see what we're actually doing, see how we're doing stuff and why things are working. And this is a perfect example. So I'm just going to turn up this one dial here and show you the difference. I'd give anything to see your face cause I'm missing you. Now, like any process, it's possible to overdrive it internally. And if that starts to happen, it's often wise just to grab a couple of Live's utility plugins and just drop the levels either going in or going out or both. So we've compensated for the level change and now I've just grouped everything together. So let's just turn it on and off so you can hear the difference. I'd give anything to see now just one last trick whilst we're on the vocal racks uh, you'll see a lo-fi control here on the main vocal sonics rack um, this will by turning it up give it that classic radio voice let me show you exactly what i mean whilst in the loop i give anything to see your face cause i'm missing you now, of course, just because it says Vocal Sonics on the rack doesn't mean you can't use this process on anything else, whatever works. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to have time to cover absolutely everything, and I really want to get onto the instruments, but just quickly, let me show you what this can do to a breakbeat. This is the uh, Drum Sonics. B um, rack and it's multi-band. The multi-band controls here at the bottom, thump, crack and sizzle. But let me just show you what the rest can do. Now let's show you the same process on another break. This is before processing. Now after. Okay, time for the instruments. And the first one that I want to show you is Analog Pad Heaven. It sounds like this. Now, the most important control on this and the other instruments is this selection switch here. What this does on this particular instrument is go between 11 different waveform sets, and each one is slightly different. For example, here's number six. Number eight. Number 
Number 10. And here's 11. Um, with some very clever macro work, they all share the same series of controls. Uh, we've got a simplified version of the synthesizers in there. You've got cut off, filter envelope, resonance, and filter attack, filter release, VCA attack, VCA release. And we found just these seven controls give you an awful lot of power. Now, also, if I just open these up and make these quite stabby, I want to show you something that's really impressive with these. So these can hit hard like that as well, but you'll get no machine gunning. Every single keystroke selects a slightly different part of the waveform using some clever offsetting. So you get that analog feel as if the oscillators are running free. Now that's particularly important on the next one that I want to show you, which is analog bass heaven. Now, how many times have you brought multi-sampled analog synths only to find that when you hit the same key more than once, exactly the same sample plays and it sounds totally static? Now, that's not how an analog synth works. You will not get that with this. This is far more authentic. We have sampled the raw waveforms from things like uh, a Mini Moog, a Jupiter 4, an MKS-80 and an SH-101. And uh, using some very clever LFO work, it's picking a random part of the waveform every time it re-triggers. And because all of the sound design is actually done si inside of Ableton's uh, sampler with the use of the brilliant cytomic filters, you can get some real analog juice out of it. Now, this time we've actually got 16 different waveform sets for you to play with. And with a very simple sequence, let me just show you what you can get out of this. Bearing in mind, once again, all of the synthesizer controls are shared between the different sample sets. Okay, and now for an instrument that I've been really excited to show you. This is the 21st century bass instrument, and it kind of references all of those complex and multi-layered basses, but it does it in one rack. So, first of all, on the bottom layer, we have sub, but we have
12 different sub layers. They've come from different sources, some from analog synth, some from the best digital synths we could find. The next one, I'm going to turn the sub off now, uh, is the clunk layer. Now we've got, how many have we got? Eight of these. By themselves, they don't sound too great, but you start to add them with the sub. Now, I'm pretty sure you're starting to get the concept already. Let me take you through the next layer, which is mallets. Now, the last layer is quite subtle, but very useful. It's a whole series of high-pass filtered and digitally processed uh, bass one-shots that just sit nicely right at the top just to add a little bit of percussive interest. Now, let's start putting this all together and let's build a patch. Okay, so some sub-foundations. Not too much. Bring the clunk, the lower mids in. Nice bit of mallet. those tops. Now let's hear what that sounds like in a sequence. Now add to one of that one of our processing racks, say parallel distortion. Now, that's why we called it 21st century bass, a completely contemporary sound very, very quickly. And speaking of contemporary, as we were doing sub bass, we just had to build this, the 808 designer. You've got 12 different body sample sets to choose from and 12 different clicks that add together with some harmonics controls, a limiter and some lower mids for punch. And you can build your own completely unique 808 out of that to fit your track perfectly. Now, you'll notice that we haven't uh, destroyed some of those um, sub samples like you hear in some of the 808 collections. That's up for you to do. We're giving you all the raw power, dive in and distort the living daylights out of them. And just to round things off, we've got our famous now F9 Trinity kits and a bit of an update on the 808. So as well as the core sounds and all the controls such as tuning and parallel compression, pressure, etc, etc. We've also got arpeggiated hi-hats. and snares, which makes it great fun to build beats like this. So thanks for watching this walkthrough of the Parallel Mixing Suite for Ableton 9.5 and above. These racks will work with both standard and suite editions. These sampler instruments are built out simplers. We hope you make something stunning with all of this. And as always, keep in touch and we'll see you next time.